All of this footage was colored using the Hanser OFX for DaVinci Resolve. I've been a user of their plugin for over a year now, and I have fallen in love with the images Dehancer can produce. Dehancer specializes in creating cinematic film looks for your digital cameras. With an array of film stocks and film prints, Dehancer is a great plugin for any colorist or filmmaker. This video is not sponsored by Dehancer, it is just a product that I use very often and look forward to sharing. For simplicity's sake, let's start with just a simple four node tree. Now my first node will be our exposure, my second node will be ratio for contrast, my third node will be balance for setting our temperature and tint, and lastly Dehancer. So what I like to do is first set up the look and kind of the destination you want to follow along with Dehancer. I will open up my effects tools and search for Dehancer. Because I'm using DaVinci Resolve's Wide Gamma Intermediate, I'm gonna take my input and change my source from Rec. 709 to DaVinci Resolve Wide Gamma Intermediate. Now, you can also choose your camera or just simply go with Rec. 709 if that's what you're editing off of. For me, this will be DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. I typically, when I start, turn off my film grain so I can get a clearer view of what I'm editing. Now, Dehancer offers a very strong list of different kinds of film socks to use. We have a wide array from Kodak Visions 3 to Kodak Gold to Cinestill 50D, Portra 400, and the list goes on. Here I can interject if you want to do some research on what film stock to use. There's tons of different ways to find what film stocks your favorite movies were shot on. If you want to pull reference. Here is one of my methods for finding film stocks. I just go to shot on what and search for a film I like, and under description, search for the film stock used. Then I'll Google film grabs, and under this website, I'll look for the stills of said film. From here, I can get good reference of any of the stills from the film that I want to pull inspo from. Arguably, the two most important aspects of the answer are the film stock and the film print. So, for our film stock, we'll be using Kodak Gold 200. And for our film print, we will also be using Kodak 2383 print. So now this will give us a little bit more contrast and a little bit more tone to our image. From here, I like to go back and start to mess with the range of our image. So in that first exposure node, I think we can bring it up just a tad in the ratio node, I'm gonna give us a little bit more contrast. So I'm gonna bring down our shadows just a bit. There you go. In a balance, I'm going to start to add a little bit of warmth into the image. And then take away a little bit of that tint of the little magenta cast. Bam. All right, so now Bypassing and bringing back, you can already see we've gone a long way with just the ground level of Dehancer and some basic adjustments. But Dehancer doesn't stop there. Dehancer offers a lot of tools to get the very most out of your image. Bloom gives you almost a computer-generated version of a ProMist filter. It softens the image at the highlights and you can adjust it at your own capacity. Now, in Dehancer, you can finick with the exposure, the temperature comp, the tint, the fringe, so on and so forth. You can even push and pull the film stock. Another great feature of Dehancer is they're always updating the software. There's always great blog posts giving you a bunch of new information on what's new to Dehancer and how the color science works. And one of their newest additions is the film developer. With the film developer, you can soften your image in the contrast boost, or you can enhance the contrast very authentically. So I'm gonna finick around with this image and show you what I end up with using Dehancer. 
The Tools Dehancer offers eases the creation of cinematic footage by a landslide. If you want to go further in depth with every tool of Dehancer, they have a great blog site to learn more and their manual is very comprehensive.